Do you remember when Cristiano Ronaldo played his first seasons in Madrid? Back then, he was wearing the number 9 on his back. And that seems odd because we are all used to his trademark number 7. That's because back in those years, there was another player occupying it. That player was none other than the legendary Raul, also known as the Angel of Madrid. A man who wasn't just a great footballer. He was an icon for the city of Madrid. And today, I am going to tell you his story. Raul was born on 27th of June in 1977 in San Cristobal de Los Angeles, a suburb of the southern side of Madrid. From a young age, he showed passion for football and eventually he would join the local team at 11 years of age. As a kid, Raul didn't particularly show that he was the best among his peers. However, his first coach, Renato de la Cour, remembers him as a very hardworking boy. At 13, Raul would join Atletico Madrid's youth academy, and what's interesting is that as a kid, he was an Atletico fan. However, due to the club not investing much on their youth system at the time, Raul was forced to leave, and that's when everything changed. He joined Real Madrid's academy, and he may not have known back then, but he had made the choice of his life. He quickly impressed and was climbing the ranks, getting promoted in the youth system until Jorge Valdano, the coach of Real at that time, noticed Raul and wanted to give him a chance. Imagine the pressure that a 17-year-old kid can have playing for a team like Real Madrid. Everyone would be scared from this challenge. However, Valdano himself has stated that he told Raul that he was thinking of playing him, but was afraid that he could be a bit nervous. Raul responded, If you want to win, then play me. If you don't want to win, put someone else in the team. Despite his age, he had the confidence of a leader, because it was not just skill that brought the young Raul in the lineup of Real, it was his mentality. On 29th of October of 1994 against Real Zaragoza, Raul became the youngest player ever to play for Real Madrid. Just a week later, he scored his first ever goal with a beautiful left-footed shot in the top corner against Atletico Madrid. To score your first ever goal in a derby match, well, some people, they are born for greatness, and Raul was destined for it. The Spaniard would register a total of nine goals in 28 appearances, becoming a key figure in the starting lineup, and by the end, the season real would win La Liga, with Raul winning the first ever title of his career. In the seasons to come, his goals would just keep coming. Raul was a player who was always searching for a way to score, and he was excellent at it. In 1999, he won his first Pichichi Trophy, which is awarded to the top scorer of the season in La Liga, with 25 nets. Raul repeated it in 2001, this time with 24. Raul managed to win six titles and four Spanish Super Cups, but his fame and success would not only remain in Spain. His partnership and attack with the fellow Spanish striker Fernando Morientes had risen to be one of the deadliest ones in Europe at that time. Their great understanding had led Real to the Champions League final of 1998 against Juventus, one of the strongest teams in those years. The match ended 1-0 with Real winning their first European Cup in 32 years. Raul had become an icon in Madrid. He was loved by the fans and was considered one of the best players of his generation. He was great in the area, scoring from different positions, and he was regarded as a very clever player, always obsessed with finding a way to put the ball in the net. Although he wasn't the fastest or the strongest, his intelligence and mentality, for which he was among the best, made him a feared player. Just two years later, and they were playing in another Champions League final in the 99-00 season, despite disappointing in the league, in which they finished fifth, the players had a chance to make the beginning of the new millennial unforgettable. Real Madrid versus Valencia, the first time that in a European Cup final, two Spanish teams were set against each other. In the 75 the minute, Raul found himself free of defenders, and with a beautiful run from halfway line, he scored with his right after dribbling past the goalkeeper, making it 3-0 and sealing the victory for Real Madrid. In the next season, two major events would occur. The first being the signing of Luis Figo, which would announce the beginning of one of the most influential phenomenons ever in sports history, the Galactico era. And the second, the 2000-2001 season, would be Raul's best one. He won the La Liga that year as top scorer, an award he managed to win in the Champions League as well with seven goals. However, Real lost in the semi-finals to eventual champions, Bayern Munich. That would be the only time in his career in which Raul would climb into the Ballon d'Or podium. He finished as runner-up, with Michael Owen getting the win after his success with Liverpool that year. If Real had managed to repeat the European success of the previous season, he probably would have been voted as number one. 
In the next season, however, after taking revenge on Bayern in the quarterfinals and beating rivals Barcelona in the semis, Real would now be in another Champions League final against Bayern Leverkusen. Raul would score the first goal, back then being the first player to score in two UEFA Champions League finals. Lucio would draw the game, and after that the signing of the season, Zinedine Zidane with a left-footed volley would give Real the win, scoring one of the most beautiful goals in Champions League history. Although other star players joined, like Ronaldo or Beckham, Real Madrid's homegrown Raul was still as good as them, and in 2003, after almost a decade at the club, he would be appointed captain. During his career, he has been regarded as a very creative player, with great technique, who was able to play on various ways in attack, as a center forward, as a winger, and also as an attacking midfielder. Raul was a good penalty and free kick taker as well, and a signature trait for him were his chip goals. Raul, of course, was very disciplined and a true leader. He was the symbol of Madrid. On an international level, Raul captained Spain, and in time he became his nation's top scorer until David Villa broke the record. He scored 44 goals in 102 appearances. Despite playing in five major international tournaments, Spain's era of success would only start in the UEFA Euro 2008, in which Raul, sadly, was not selected for the team. He scored many goals, always giving 100% for his nation. However, they never managed to reach a final or win a title. Raul's biggest regret was in the Euro 2000. Spain had managed to reach the quarterfinals, and they were drawn against France. In the last minute of the game, Spain got a penalty, which was trusted to Raul. What could have been a wonderful a dream turned into a terrible nightmare as Raul blazed it over the bar, and Spain's hopes were crushed. He was so disappointed of himself. Paco Jemez, who played as a centre-back for Spain, stated in an interview that he saw Raul crying in the shower like someone close to him had died. Raul loved to play for Spain, and missing a penalty like that totally crushed him. Despite this, he was still named in the Euro 2000 team of the tournament. On 15th of February 2009, after a cross in the box from Sergio Ramos, Raul scored his 308th goal for Real Madrid, surpassing Alfredo Di Stefano and becoming the top scorer of the club, for which he had dedicated all of his best years. A year later, on 24th of April, Raul scored his last goal for Real Madrid in his last game for the club, coincidentally against Real Zaragoza, in the same stadium that he played his debut back in 1994. In total, he played 741 games and scored 323 goals. In 2010, Raul signed for Schalke 04 in the Bundesliga, and what played a major role in his decision was their qualification in Champions League. He was simply not done yet, even though he was 33 years old now. It took some time for Raul to show his greatness in Germany, but once it started, it never stopped. By December, he had already sealed two hat-tricks in the Bundesliga. In March, Schalke faced Bayern Munich in the semi-finals of the DFB Pokal, where Raul scored the winner for his side with a beautiful header and progressed to win the trophy in the final. Later that season, the Spaniard would win another trophy with Schalke, the DFL Super Cup against Dortmund. But during the same season, Raul would make history with Schalke by helping the team reach the semi-finals of the UEFA Champions League in a historic run which saw Schalke beat Inter in the quarterfinals, who were the European champions at the time. The master scored in both legs, showing that he never lost it. Schalke would go on to be beaten by Manchester United, but despite that, the 2010-2011 was an amazing season for them, one of the most entertaining team to see back then. Raul would also produce a magnificent chip against Köln in that year, which would be declared as the goal of the season. In 98 games, he scored 40 goals for Schalke, and in his time there, he won the fans' hearts. He became a true symbol for the team. In 28th of April, 2012, Raul played his last game in Gelsenkirchen, a game in which he also scored. Senor Raul had the Germans speaking Spanish on that fateful day. Not only the Schalke fans, but also those of Hertha Berlin shed tears, showing how much of a legacy Raul left in Germany. After some short spells in Qatar and USA, where he scored a few goals and managed to win some domestic trophies, Raul finally hung his boots in 2015. A true legend of the game at a time before Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi took over, Raul Gonzalez Blanco was the top scorer of Real with 323 goals and the also the top scorer in Champions League with 71. He is still the most capped player for Real Madrid, with 741, and before David Villa broke his record, he was also Spain top scorer. 
He was not just a great player, but also a leader and a gentleman on the field. During his long career, he never received a red card, which shows how professional and respectful he was. This was the story of one of the most legendary players to ever put a ball past the net.